each miracle you have, every miraculous expression that comes through you is just you coming deeper and deeper inward in your mind to, it's a dream, it's a dream. Every miracle just reinforces that, it's just a dream. You know, life is but a dream, merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream, merrily, merrily, merrily. Life is but a dream. The miracles keep reinforcing that ancient nursery rhyme <laughs> over and over, saying, yeah, it's true, it's just a dream. You're the dreamer of it. You're not a figure. You're not at the mercy of all these things that seem so big and blown out of proportion in the projected world. You're the dreamer. You're the dreamer. And it just gets more and more and more in there. Francis was saying the other day, was it a couple days ago, you, you had some dreams and you, you said, where were we? Greece. We were in Greece, and maybe around Athens or something, and then at one point we were somewhere else and we were talking and it was like, we need to go back to this place where we were teaching. And she said we went to this like picture room and we were looking at all these scenes and going foop, 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 and we were flipping through these screens of all these different places trying to get back to this place where we were teaching. Some of you might have seen the movie with uh, Tom Cruise, Minority Report, where he was in that movie and it had this screen and zoop, zoop. he was looking into all these, he was looking into the future of all these scenarios and, and they were trying to catch crimes before they would happen. They were using empaths and everything. He was kind of zipping through all these pictures. That was what reminded me of that when you were talking. We, we have to get more and more aware that all these pictures, and think of your life in this world, all those memories were just like a picture book. And now think of them as like a digital Picture, picture book that you can take your little fingertips and zoom, zoom, zoom. you can zoom them around, you can zip them around, swish them away, bring them back, look, refine them. Like on the iPhone, you can expand them for more details. You can look into them and collapse them and push them away. You know, think of it all as like digital memory. And, and think of this room and think of this character that's talking now as just more just digital memories for your mind, that it's just more of these kind of memories and, and you're going deeper and deeper inward just for one realization and that's that you're the dreamer. That's the only realization when they talk about what are your, why did you come to earth, what lessons did you come to learn? Why, did, why do we think there has to be plural lessons? You really think there's going to be like at the end, you know, there's four golden lessons. There's five golden lessons. You've only learned four. You've got to go back, you know. Why do we think there has to be plural lessons when actually it's much simpler than that? We don't even have lessons to learn. There's not even plural lessons. All we have to do is get one to, to escape or to recognize the truth and that's the one lesson is Jesus says you are the dreamer of the world of dreams no other cause does it have or ever will he's like boom he's like given the whole thing in all of its majesty you are the dreamer of the world of dreams no other cause does it have or ever will that's the only lesson that's it it's just one lesson that's, that's all it is. How hard can that be, really? I mean, one. Think of all the things we've, all the meaningless things that we've learned through our education, and we're probably in the billions and trillions of things. If you think that you could take your mind and learn all those billions and trillions of bits of nothingness, you would think that you could turn it around and unlearn them and learn one lesson or get one lesson experientially if that's all that it is. You know? It's like, this is what Jesus is telling us. He said, the truth is true and only the truth is true. 
He's like giving it to us, but the only way you can experience that truth is to see that you're the dreamer. So that's the beauty, the happiness, the joy, that's the lightheartedness that we were talking about in the, the first session, you know. How can you laugh at, at the dreams? Well, if you don't know that you're the dreamer, then you're left in a position of, of two different kinds of dreams. The dream that you think you like and the dreams that you don't like. And that's the human condition. And that's unsatisfying. Because then you always get weighing two, dream, two kinds of dreams. You know, oh, I've had some good dreams, bad dreams. We were talking about our discussion earlier today at the Metaphysical Center and I'm in love. Okay, that's good, that's good. And I want the happy dream. Okay, do you know what that is? <laughs> if you think you can fall in love with the body, then you don't know what the happy dream is. But I want both of them. I want to love a body and I want the happy dream too. And Jesus says, what do you want? Freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? For both you cannot have. Isn't that great? Hear it straight from Jesus, for both you cannot have. What do we want to do, spend a few millennium debating that? Ah, hello. Stay away, stay away. I finally got the princess. Do you stay away? Took me a whole two millennium to get the princess. I'll sick the dragon on you, flames on you. Just stay away, don't you? touch it. No, it's that this, this protectiveness of these concepts and images that, you know, at some point we have to realize how, how long are we going to play this game of protectiveness, you know.